And since we want this contrast of moods and temperatures, if we are going to have a cozy, warm interior, we want the exterior to dictate the opposite. So the light temperature can be set to a cooler tone outside, warmer tone inside. Hey everyone, my name is Steven and I believe that architects and designers should always strive to communicate their ideas better by showing them better. Today, we will see how to represent better and faster our architectural renders using D5 Render. I will divide this video into three parts. First, explaining the project, the 3D model, and what I did in SketchUp before even importing it into D5 Render. Second, how I added assets and elements inside of D5 and modified some materials. And last, the final effects and secret sauce added in Photoshop at the end. I wanna thank D5 Render for sponsoring this video. And although D5 Render is the main tool used for these renderings, there are some general workflow tips that can be super super useful for anyone working in different softwares at the end i will also announce a competition being held in d5 which i am judge and there are more than seven thousand dollars in prizes but all of that info at the end so Let's start. So the project I use is a house designed by modern architect Fernando Martinez in the 50s. He is considered one of the great Colombian architects who created many projects in the modern movement. This is one of the first houses he designed. It is a very simple, non-pretentious house that accommodates to the terrain and uses local materials. The house does not exist today, but I had the opportunity to study and analyze the work of this architect in my master's degree, so I modeled many of his houses in SketchUp. And with the permission of the gods of Colombian architecture, I'm going to use this house for this video and maybe maybe a few more videos. Since the model was made mostly for at cinematic diagrams, some analyses, there was no furniture or details in the actual model. So I started by fitting window frames, which I thought needed a little bit more detail. Window frames are one of those elements that can seem insignificant when creating a render, but add a ton of detail and professionalism to a render. If you want your renders to look pro, take a look at the window details. It will change your images. For creating windows, you can do them yourself, but it will be a real pain to create. So if you are exporting from Revit, they will already be super detailed, or you can also use some SketchUp extensions, which will create windows with all of these specifications when you select the surface of the window. Now for the terrain, I simply modeled it with the sandbox tool, making sure to add some imperfections to it. So when I added some vegetation afterwards, it wouldn't look so flat. Also, I added an inclined plane so I wouldn't see empty white space in the reflections of the glass from the house. From the 3D warehouse, I downloaded a mountain background from the page of the one and only Matt Zafkowski, of which I always go to. For the materials, I decided to use a mix of materials from D5 and also materials directly applied into SketchUp. In this case, I used a brick texture from a custom material as well as a roof and interior wall texture. The glass, metal window framing, uh, fence and grass were applied all inside of D5. Now, one of the keys to a good render, I think, is adding little details that many won't notice. In this case, I decided to add a gutter on the side and a TV antenna. It is one of those things that we know we have to do in our designs, but since we don't actually design it, we remove it from our renders so they can look you know, cleaner. But what we don't know is that these elements will just give it a little bit more realism personalization and life. So anytime that you can, add as many details like these, you know, imperfections. And after having the majority of the model ready, I hit the play button in D5 and open the program. This is pretty straightforward and fast, but if you want optimum performance, make sure to only have SketchUp and D5 open. You can have other programs open, but depending on your specs of your computer, it can start to lag a little bit. Now, I knew the glass was going to be a main figure within all the materials. I had It had to stand out, but in a 50s modern house kind of way. So I decided to go with a brick glass material, which is in the D5 library, and it comes set with everything. For the metal, it was more or less the same. The black framing was going to make the glass stand out so much more. So if it was a black black matte that didn't reflect as much but still captured some of those bluish tones from the surroundings. It will be great. Uh, little by little, I added materials that I thought would suit the image I had in my head the best. Maybe sometimes you think concrete walls or white plaster is going to look good on everything, but the reality is different. Going for those strange materials we tend to overlook can give your image a special look that highlights it. Now for the main grass, I applied a grass material directly from the D5 material library 
and set its parameters to grass. Here you can specify things like the height of the grass, scale of the texture, and randomness. One other important note of materiality and textures on this newer version of D5 is that it uses texture streaming to dynamically load texture maps, ensuring that material textures are loaded only when they are in the camera and store other textures temporarily on the disk. This is tied onto a bigger subject, which is D5 smoothness, which in short lets you experience real-time rendering in the viewport without any drastic changes in frame rate. Now, of course, the vegetation. It's what we are all interested in, right? How to add the grass, which trees to use, how to place them best. The vegetation, if done correctly, can highlight the house even more. But since it's such an ample subject, we have to be specific talking about it. And first, the background vegetation. First, we know that we want to put some big trees on the side and some trees behind the camera because we have a lot of glass and we have to see that tree reflection on the glass. So adding here big scale trees that have different densities is key to your render. Since this is the backyard of the house, kind of like the second facade, there is always a space to put some decorative plants and flowers that you want to take care of. If I lived in this house, there's absolutely nothing that I would like to do more than waking up on a Sunday around 8 a.m., whatever, and going down the stairs to water these plants. Maybe give a little haircut to some of them, you know. Anyways, you know, add some informal decorative vegetation in a random order again to give the sense of humanity to the image. Now for the foreground vegetation, I knew I wanted something super wild and kind of not that taken care of. So I was going to have some big shrubs, irregular patterns, some ferns and flowers that come out over the years. Of course, you want to place them in such a way that they don't obstruct the main facade, but also don't leave too much space open so you can cover parts of the model you, you didn't finish. So in this part, I use the D5's brush tools to place in a fast and random order different kinds of plants and vegetation. Finally, to end, two slim trees that will frame the image perfect. So for the people, you know, it's a house, it's around 6 p.m., there are no guests over, and the best place to have a chat is sitting on the stairs. Maybe I would have added like a glass of wine, but that just complements the story perfect. And also for the interior furniture, since I also experimented with some interior renderings, I added some furniture and assets inside as well as some curtains and some other little details. These are, of course, also crucial for your exterior render. Although you can't see clearly what is inside, you know that there is something inside and it's not just about an empty space. Now we have our model ready. It is time to set up our lighting, mood, and colors. From the start, I knew I wanted to have a diffused kind of sunset light, but still I saved different scenes with different times so I could have options. Sometimes you never know what surprises you are going to get when you go off a little bit off plan. To have this sunset look, I for the clouds, I set the cloud lever all the way up so we don't see any clear skies. And for the exposure, I wanted a dark image, but not dark enough that I didn't see any vegetation color so I just adjusted it accordingly and uh, now at this time of the day probably the owners have turned on the light and of course we want a really warm light that is just going to make us want to go inside and get a little cozy so I added a little uh, a light in D5 and took the temperature to very warm and since we want this contrast of moods and temperatures if we are going to have a cozy warm interior we want the exterior to dictate the opposite so the light temperature can be set to a cooler tone outside warmer tone inside and now before hitting render you want to make sure your defocus is on and you select your main focal point so the house can have that so you can have that blurry look also in the newest version you can have some options to color correct inside of d5 you can modify global tones shadows and highlights which is very very useful uh, to do it also if you can you can add a preset LUT that can give the colors and tones more coherence and set a specific mood rendering and rendering times when hitting the render button it really didn't take too much time maybe about five to six minutes it was really fast i also created a small four second animation that maybe took a while more but still it was pretty fast one of the things i should highlight about the newest version of d5 render is the global illumination which uses a strategy of combining ray tracing and light probe based gi to find the balance between accuracy and efficiency also when rendering you can now export to different image formats uh, up to 16k photos also there are widgets that you can activate to have more customization options when exporting if you wanted to animate the same scene 
you would want to make sure that you chose plants and characters that are animated or dynamic. So with features like, for example, wind, they would move and make everything move and make everything look more realistic. And this was our final render from D5. Now I will import it into Photoshop and open the camera raw filter. Here we just have some more possibilities for now to change the mod to change and modify very specific things. Here I can add a bit more texture and clarity to the image as well as adjust the exposure and overall white balance. And here I can also group the greens of the vegetation and set it to a more yellowish tone as well as increase saturation of the interior light and decrease the saturation of the exterior wind shadows. You always want to play with the opposites in these images. If you want a specific part to gain more attention, you have to lower the visual volume of the rest of the elements in the image. And as all creative processes, getting to this final image was not easy and took some time, mostly staring at the screen, not doing anything, looking through blogs, images, photographs, and books, and just trying to really think the direction of the image. These are some of the other uh, images that I exported from the same model, and I know that there are so much more that can be done in, in a much, much better way. Either way, I was happy with the result. Now, if some of you are inspired right now to create your own images, I have a super cool invitation so you can practice your skills and maybe have the chance to earn an extra $4,000. 2000 I don't know that sounds kind of good so it is a render challenge hosted by d5 render with a the theme how far would you go where we create an image where we show where we would dream to go in these times of restrictions and isolations I mean that sounds pretty cool right so there are more than seven thousand dollars in prices plus a subscription to d5 pro and many more things you can read all the rules and dates in the link down below the closing date to submit your entry is on may 23rd and one last thing it is free to enter so anyone can participate i'm looking forward to seeing your results and that was it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want a beginner's tutorial on how to use d5 you can click on this video right here or anywhere over here uh, let me know what you thought of our results and what you would do to create maybe a, a better image, any tips, highlights. As always, understanding is, these programs better can help show our ideas better. See you tomorrow. Bye.